Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're doing a quick guide EMS on Narcan or Naloxone. Now this is actually a medication that us here in the pre-hospital setting actually really like. Uh, the reason being is that it works almost immediately. Okay, it's a great tool. Uh, basically what it is, is it's a opioid antagonist. All right, or in other terms, it basically inhibits the receptor sites of opioids and reverses uh, any respiratory depression that you get with opioid overdose or use. So the dose of Narcan is typically 0.4 milligrams to two milligrams. Now, depending on your protocols, they might even say two to four milligrams should be given to the adult. And for pediatric use, it should be 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. Now, most textbooks nowadays and protocols are saying that you don't want to give more than 10 milligrams. Now, one thing about this dose is that it needs to be given slowly for a couple reasons. All right. My first reason is because if you push this drug too quickly, you do have a potential of extreme vomiting. All right. Or you're going to get projectile vomiting. Don't do it. Another reason is for your patients who are known as opioid dependents, all right, or they have opioid dependency. These people, they require opioids and narcotics to live, okay? They take them daily and they take them sometimes multiple times a day. For these individuals, if you give them Narcan, you will put them into a state of withdrawal and these patients become combative and crazy. Okay, I've had it happen to me multiple times and the call gets pretty interesting when you have a patient who was uh, unresponsive and now all of a sudden they're up and they're fighting. So make sure that you have uh, people there, backup, uh, utilize PD if you need to utilize posy restraints or some type of uh, half chemical restraints on standby if needed. Be careful with giving too much Narcan or too quickly. Okay, the old adage used to be 0.4 milligrams uh, per minute. Now with the whole opioid uh, epidemic, I understand that giving 0.4 per minute might not be enough. Um, I remember back when I, if I gave two milligrams, it was like, holy crap, like we gave a whole two milligrams. Uh, usually we don't need that much. But now with carfentanil and other uh, opioids that are mixed with fentanyl and other different substances, they're requiring a lot more of the drug. The most I've given at one time have been eight milligrams, and I've had a few patients that are like that. This medication comes packaged two milligrams and two mLs. Okay, two milligrams and two mLs. Now you might be wondering, how is my patient going to present, and who am I giving this to? Okay, the patient is gonna be typically unresponsive, um, depressed respiratory rate, so breathing rate less than 12 breaths per minute. The patient is often snoring, or I've even seen the patient not breathing at all. These patients that are on an opioid overdose or have taken too many opioids, they're so weak that when you get there, the patient may not be breathing all we need to do starting is head tilt chin lift, all right, BLS. Open the airway, and a lot of the times just that tongue occluding that airway, the patient's so weak that they cannot um, breathe hard enough to bypass that tongue. They can't even snore, all right? They're so weak that they can't even snore. So we need to do a head tilt chin lift, allow them to breathe, and we're gonna go ahead and bag them, all right? So we'll breathe for that patient one breath every five to six seconds. Uh, for the adult, one breath every three to five for the, for the kids and infants. Now, other than my patient having a depressed respiratory drive or unresponsive, another classic sign that you're going to find are pinpoint pupils. All right. Always, always, always look at the pupils. If you have a patient who's unresponsive, of course, we're going to check a pulse. Make sure they have a pulse. If they have a pulse, check the pupils, check the sugar. Okay. Especially nowadays. Sometimes we catch that the pupils are pinpoint almost immediately and we can get Narcan on board within a couple minutes after our arrival. 
Now the onset of Narcan is only about two minutes. All right. Typically I see effects way quicker than two minutes. Now, most literature that I've looked at states that it can take up to two minutes for this drug to actually work. Now it lasts, the duration in the body will last up to 60 minutes. Now some opioids that are very commonly seen out in the field, um, fentanyl, not only in pill form, but we're also seeing in patches, always expose your patients. Uh, I've had multiple people who don't, aren't even prescribed these medications. Typically they have a family member that's prescribed them and they're like, oh my, yeah, I have some back pain. So I threw my wife's, you know, fentanyl patch on my back and it wasn't working, so I put a couple more on, and then all of a sudden the guy's unresponsive. It happens. All right, um, another really popular one is heroin. Uh, like I said, nowadays it got really cheap, and we, there's a ton of users out there, so heroin is very common. Uh, pills, oxys, uh, oxycodone, Percocets, really popular out there. And uh, there are definitely a, a long list of opioids uh, that you might be seeing and I will put a, a nice list in here just to give you guys an idea of or maybe something that you may have seen that you're not sure is an opioid. Opioid dependency uh, is really the only uh, contraindication for Narcan. Now hypersensitivity you're gonna see that in a lot of books I think those are the patients that are hypersensitive to Narcan, okay? So if your patient is a potential to be someone who utilizes opioids every day, all the time, this medication may be contraindicated for that patient, but if they don't have a respiratory drive and we're trying to get one for that patient, just be very cognizant of the fact that they might wake up swinging, okay? so give the medication slowly. Now some other adverse reactions that I've seen after giving Narcan, uh, tachycardia, hypertension, agitation, like I said, vomiting, and possibly even shortness of breath. Now you may have heard something called flash pulmonary edema. Now most literature that I've read, it states that it's very uh, uncommon. I've even seen one statistic of 1.3% of patients who are given Narcan do have some sort of uh, pulmonary edema post-administration. All right, uh, just be cognizant that and monitor your patient. Look at, uh, at their O2 saturation. And like I said, if you push it slow, you won't run into that of pushing too much too quickly, which can cause a lot more issues, okay? So like I said, again, push it slow, be controlled. Now, I have had some people ask, should we be pushing Narcan during a cardiac arrest? Now, we know in our H's and T's, toxins is one of our T's. Should we be giving Narcan in cardiac arrest? Yeah, we should be, all right? Especially depending on the um, medications that our patients are taking, depending on the age of the patient that's in cardiac arrest. So giving two milligrams, to a patient in cardiac arrest is really not gonna cause any harm to the patient. So you should consider giving two milligrams to your cardiac arrest patients. All right guys, well I hope this helped. Like I said, Narcan's a great medication. Naloxone, Narcan, you could almost find, depending on where you're at, you might even find this stuff in uh, AED cabinets. Uh, Every provider, healthcare provider, even first responder like police officers are now carrying Narcan. Remember, Narcan can be given not only IV, but it could also be given IM, and it could also be given intranasally. Great medication. It works uh, wonders on patients who require it. Remember, give it slow, give it steady, and be cognizant on how much Narcan you're giving. Don't forget to monitor your patient while doing so. I hope this helped. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.